Okay, this is a short cautionary video before you um, download any of the new Visions for Public Schools add-ons. Um, these add-ons are free, they're fantastic, they do some really cool stuff that um, allow some automation uh, where it's appropriate and free up your time. So I'm a huge advocate of these things. They, they are so cool. But in order to work, they have to have complete access to your Google Drive, including the ability to read, write, and delete anything in your Google Drive. Now, I completely trust New Visions for Public School, um, but I don't trust uh, everyone on the internet who could potentially uh, gain access to uh, their systems and do some bad things in my Google Drive. So what I've done, um, mostly because I work in an office where we all share access to a Google Drive and I don't want to be the one responsible for getting everyone's stuff deleted, um, I've created a dummy Gmail account. If you've ever taken one of our workshops, you've gotten an email from ERCCertificates at gmail.com. That's an account I created specifically to use these things so that I can play around with them and know that the rest of our Google Drive is safe because it only has access to a very small part of it. Okay, so if you think that's way too paranoid and not for you, you can end this video here. If you're sold on the idea and want to create a fake account, um, I shouldn't say fake, it's a real Gmail account. You're just not using it for maybe its intended purpose. Um, if, you, if you're on board with that and you know how to do it, you can stop here too. But if you want me to walk you through um, how to set up an extra Gmail account, um, I'll do that now. Okay. Shoop. Here we are. Okay. Pardon the picture in picture. So what I've done now is I have opened an incognito tab in Chrome. Um, I'm using Chrome because I'm most comfortable with it and it plays most nicely with the various Google Docs and things. Um, and so right now I'm logged in as ERC certificates. One of the nice things about incognito mode is that in regular mode, you can be logged in in your main Google account and in incognito mode, you can be logged in on your alternate. So if you just switch between windows, you can, um, you can play with both of those accounts at the same time. And that's what I'm doing. So to get an incognito window, you just go up to your file menu and it's new incognito window. The hotkey is shift command N on a Mac. I think it's probably shift control N on a PC. So I'm logged in as ERC certificates right now. So I need to sign out before I can make a new account. And then instead of clicking sign in, well, let's see what happens when I click sign in. I bet I can make a new account from there. It's been a while since I've set this up. I didn't want to make up like a fake, fake account um, just to practice setting up a fake account. So down here, you can see it says create account now that we're in here. And I'm going to say for myself. Uh, I'll still use my same name. There's like a million Emily Heltons out there. Um, what do I want my username to be? Let's see. Is that good? I think that's eight. Oh. Uh, well, it's 200. Why not? It's 2020. Perfect. Okay, so now you they want you to put in your phone number. Um, I've put in my phone number for several accounts and it hasn't balked yet, so it should be fine. I'm gonna use my other email as a thing. Um, and then I'm gonna put in just a random birthday. I, as well, we're on the topic of being maybe overly paranoid about things. I never put in my actual birthday. I always put in the first of the month um, because most of these websites don't need to know my actual birthday. And that's a little bit more information than I want publicly out there. So I don't lie about the year of the month, but I, I do about the other one. Uh, let's do rather not say. Okay. So they're going to send me a six digit verification code. One of the things that because I'm in a group office and other people use these um, accounts is sometimes I'll get text messages and I just have to message out to the office like, okay, did one of you actually try to access it? And usually the answer is yes, it's not coming through. 
because I didn't click send. I apologize for making you wait there for a second. Okay, I've gotten my text message. This is why you want to use a real phone number. Um, and it can be one that's associated with other Gmail accounts, so it's not a problem. Or at least hasn't been a problem for me so far. Okay. Do I want all this? Okay. Privacy. I don't ever read these. So I'm a terrible person. Okay. I'm in. That was it. So one thing I want to do as soon as I'm in here is I want to go to Gmail and I want to set it up so that there's an auto reply that says this is an unmonitored mailbox. Um, once you're in autocrat at least I'm not hundred percent sure on the other systems you can set it up so that even if you're sending an email from this account you can put in a different reply to so if someone's getting something from you and hitting reply it's not going to go back to this mailbox as long as you tell it not to so let's see if I can remember how to do this I don't think that's the one I want I want settings so settings is the gear wheel here um see all settings. Okay, I don't need that. Those first settings that show up are just um, aesthetic choices that I don't want to worry about because I'm never going to use this email. So, so forwarding, you could set up forwarding so anything that's sent here goes someplace else. Um, that's not really what I want though. Hmm. Can I search? Vacation responder. That's what I'm going to use. So the first day is today. I'm not going to put in a last day. This is an unmonitored mailbox. It's going to be the title. Please forward any important messages to my main address. Okay. I'm not going to check this only send a response to people in my contacts because I'm not going to have anyone in my contacts. It would not go out if I sent that. So now I've got my um, vacation settings turned on. Okay. So that's, that's your first big step once you create the account is to set that up so that you're not having students or parents trying to communicate with you and it looks like you're not responding to them. So the next thing I want to do is not in Gmail, it's in Drive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my main Gmail Drive account. And I'm going to, in this Cloud Lab trainings that I already have set up, I'm going to set up a folder that I'll then share with my Safer Than Sorry 2020 account. And that will be the only file it has access to in my Drive. So it can't get to any of the other pieces. I'm creating it in my main account. It doesn't have to be in any specific area. You just kind of have to remember where it's going to be. And so you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine um, example sequester. I knew that didn't look right. Okay. So now that it's created in your main Gmail account, what you're going to do is you're going to right click on it. Um, or if you're on a Mac, hold down control and click. And then share is the setting you want to go to. Um, I already have this created within the ERC certificates folder. So that's already where I was um, in my drive. So that's why I'm seeing this here. If this folder you've created is already shared with other people, they will show up here. Um, it looks like this one isn't shared with other folks in my office, which is nice that I'm not broadcasting their email addresses, but a little bit disturbing. And I'll look into that uh, later. You have the option of restricting it to only people um, who you've added, and I would recommend keeping it that way um, because if you're going to be using it to, um, uh, to share student data or to store student data, you don't want that to be something that's publicly accessible. So the way to share safely where it's just with that other account you've created is to just type it in up here. I really hope I'm remembering that right. That's going to be embarrassing if I don't. It's showing up. Okay, so I'm going to send it. 
I'll probably get an email back uh, saying that this is an unmonitored email. But over here, I've been invited to contribute. I'm going to go ahead and click open. Probably the only email I will ever open on this account. And now I have access to this folder. It's blank, but now anything I create in here, I'll be able to see on my main account. And anything I create on my main account that's within the example sequester folder will be over here. Um, if you're wanting to regularly work from this one, and you're going to, this is going to be the account that you install all your add-ons and things on. So this is the one where you're actually going to be manipulating data. Um, it's located right now in shared with me instead of in my drive. So if you're going to my drive and you're like, I can't see the folder that I've added, what you want to do is go to shared with me, right click on it and say, add shortcut to drive. I would definitely strongly recommend doing this because otherwise I know myself and I'm going to be looking for it and wondering why I can't find it and being annoyed. Okay. So example sequester is here. Now, whenever I want to um, create a sheet that has Autocrat or use formula on a form or create templates or things like that, I'm going to be using this Safer Than Sorry 2020 account and I'm going to be creating them here because this is the account that I will be installing any of my add-ons with. I'm not going to install them on my main account because if I install them on my main account, that means giving permissions to the whole thing. Okay, so that's the brief overview. Um, I hope it was helpful. I try to strike a balance between um, going in depth enough and not uh, giving you more information than you need. Please reach out if you have any questions and I'm happy to talk you through any of it.